What's up? This is Sean from Alisana. And this is Dennis, and you're watching RockForeverMagazine.com. Hey guys, it's Tori from Rock Forever Magazine, and I am here with Sean and Dennis from Alisana. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Pretty well. Pretty Just good. lovely, thank you. Good to hear. Got a show in Orlando tonight. Excited for it? You're pumped? I am. I just watched the first band, ironically named Bothering Dennis, and they were fantastic. They were so good. I just went and met the, uh, the front man. I'm like, hey, I'm Dennis. He was like, I'm the first Dennis has ever like, actually met from a show. Wow. <laughs> so, this is iconic then. It was a, it was Going in the history book. They tore it up. So if that's <laughs> any, uh, any indication about the show, it's going to be it's really great. Yeah, Everybody's it's going to really be good. good. It's going to be a good one. We're going to do a few finish a sentence to start off. You guys ready for it? Okay, what is that? Uh, well, you finished sure. You finished a sentence. That would be pretty... Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty common sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now, if you could join any other band for a day, it would be... Alisana. Really? I, I think that'd be a pretty cool band for you to join. You should make it happen. I wouldn't ever want to be in another band. Love okay. my band. <laughs> uh, I'd be in Gore for a day. If I had to pick one, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah. You, have, you seen the, have you ever seen them play? They have like a giant wiener cannon that fires at Gore. I would be in Across the Night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I like that. All right. <laughs> now, next one. Your most embarrassing moment on stage happened when? Ooh, um, I used to wear cowboy boots on stage all the time Ooh. because I'm a hard rocking mofo like that. <laughs> and I also have a penchant for excessive sweating and spitting water and all sorts of weird lubricants on a stage. And I went, can't remember why, they spewed water or something. I went down to scream. Cowboy boots don't have a lot of traction. And I went parallel to the stage and then landed on my face oh. and then tried to play it off and got up and just took out all the drums. <laughs> so that was probably, yeah. That's beautiful. I don't know if this is necessarily most embarrassing, but most iconic embarrassing would be at our uh, Frail Wings release show when Dennis was doing <laughs> mic whips and it literally hit me on the top of the head and no. did the whole like cartoon, like Looney Tunes, like lump on the head. Yeah, it was there's been, there's been two versions of that because that was one where I was spinning it really fast and then the sweat made it slip out, extend the radius and it hit him. No. And I still have a scar on my forehead oh my from the opposite of doing it. And then someone stepped on the mic cord and shortened it. And it came at about 90 miles per hour and smashed me in the face. I think it was in Argentina. It was Argentina. Yeah. I also do guitar swings on stage. And one day I thought it would be really cool. We were in Connecticut. I'm like, I'm going to run across stage and do one. Yeah. And did it. And my momentum took my face right in my guitar. And I just poured blood the rest of the song. So that, that was good, too. Awful. So now knowing that this has happened before, do you still do these moves? Of course. Every night? What about you? Mike, no. Mike spins not as much. <laughs> not as much, I'm going to be honest. We've replaced it with some other things. Got it's just it. too, it's too dangerous at this point. We're getting yeah. too old for this crap. <laughs> <laughs> and our next one, the best advice for any aspiring musicians would be? Make sure your songs don't suck. That's very important. Advice. And I feel like... And find the right dudes. Make sure you're making music with friends. That's much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> write better songs. He's right. Make sure you're writing music with people that you can live in a van with for a very long time. Yeah. It's important because that's what tears up most bands. They I mean, just can't stand each other. All valid advice for sure. And now last one here. The biggest challenge you've overcome as a band was when? We've had... That's a tough question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially... We get along really well, so it's hard to say. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like that. I think about, like, you know, Jake's pop and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our guitarist's father passed away recently, mm. and, it's one of the, and we, it was, like, right before a tour, and then my, one of my friends passed away right before a tour and stuff like that. But it's honestly, at least for me, being around these guys, this is, like, my second family that I mean, so yeah. yeah, being able to still go out on stage and, like, and get all that out of my system and stuff. There's one of those things you don't know if you can do or not. Oh, that, mm -hmm. that would be it for me. And it put a sour note. <laughs> but no, Sad that's up. Yeah, I know. This just got real deep real fast. <laughs> no, but we got to talk about your music a little bit. The Deck ADP is your most recent release. And what's neat about this is that it's not a fictional story like we're used to. It's more autobiographical, talking about your lives and your career. So having that different mindset, how did that influence the creative process for you guys? It made it far more challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's, it's, I remember we sat there and we opened up our notebooks and like, all right, we look at each other like, how do we do this? Because we've uh, never had to do this before, you know? Yeah. Before it was always just writing characters and creating storylines. We didn't and, change it up because, I mean, you know, usually we 
you know, we're writing albums and like uh, just different environments, like studio and stuff. And this time it was just me. Like, we went down the street to like a bar that we both liked and just sat there and like listened to the song, just hung out and tried to really think about like the overall tones of the tour, like the music experience for 10 years and trying to really like, you know, focus that down into. But well, we still a few wanted songs. to keep it different than just like a diary entry. It was like, how can we make these songs fun and mean something at the same exactly. time, if that makes right, any sense. Right. So, so it was very self-reflective, but it wasn't like self-explorative. Mm. That makes sense. That makes sense. But how did you condense 10 years of a career into an EP? Like, how did you think about what to write about, what to leave out? It's not been that interesting. Yeah, very poorly. Well, honestly, like very poorly 10 though. years, I, I'm surprised we came up with five songs. <laughs> we struggled to get one. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. No, I'm sure it's been pretty eventful. It has. Yeah. No, it was funny. It was, it was a unique challenge and trying to get across like the important things. Like, like I said, the, kind of like the overall tone of like, rather than like this, like we're not talking about like show by show. We're talking about like the idea that you start out and you're a local band and then suddenly you make that transition from that to like, oh my God, I'm a national touring act now. And like, what is that like? And yeah. just try to attack it like that. It was finding all the different aspects of a career, whether it be writing the music, the dudes you make it with, the people who don't believe in you, the people who believe in you, and just finding ways to shape those into songs is what we right, did. Exactly. And there is a song on the EP called Nevermore, which I've heard you guys say talks about the current state of the music industry. And you've referred to it as a call to arms, basically. Um, so for fans listening to it, what action do you hope they're going to take when they listen to this song? It really, it is up to you. Like, that's, that's supply and demand. It's like, if you lower the bar for your expectation of what music is, people are going to put out really bad music. And <laughs> you're go okay with liking a band because they sound exactly like another band you like, then that's on you and nobody else. And that's not the way music should be. Yeah. Like, <laughs> push should and, be. and push and support artists that really move you and are really artists. And, you know, don't, don't buy into the hype. And that's the whole thing. Especially now. Like, nowadays, it is so, it's just hype. Like you got to be able to see through that. So There's hopefully you guys the, can do The it. other side of calling to arms is that buy music. Don't steal it. Don't cheat. Don't do these things. Like if you say you believe in art so much and yet you illegally download a record, you are a hypocrite and you are everything that is wrong with the music industry. So, exactly. There you go. That was a nice rant. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and Trying the EP. Bills, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and now the EP is celebrating 10 years of being in a band. So when you listen to your earliest releases now, what are the best memories that come to mind? What do you think of when you hear those songs now? Uh, we we're, hear the old songs? We're, yeah, we're, the playing, old we're playing some deep we're cuts, too. We're playing several too. very old and songs. It's yeah. fun, I'm especially because Sean and I, you know, before this band, both wrote, you know, for our previous bands. Could and, not have been further opposite of and, one another. Uh, yeah, that early okay. stuff really, you can, like, at least me going back through my lyrics, like, our different styles. You can really, there was definitely, whereas now when we write, there's that the mesh that works so well. Mm -hmm. Back then it was like, here's what I'm used to in my background, and here's what I'm used to in my right. background. And we went, and that's right. Like, <laughs> just the, sort of the, the true together. like human experience, like emotional side of mine is like just epic as fuck. Like just as wizards and like powerful as you can get. And going through some of the old, it was fun. Well, I'm what's like, cool, and I always bring this up, is that some of the heaviest lines we've ever written, and some of the non-heaviest are actually yeah. the opposite exactly and people would never know that you hear this really heavy part like oh dennis had to write that part like no exactly. sean did and you hear this part at like the end of annabelle that i hand you knife my heart thing he, he wrote that i didn't write hey. everyone's like do that part you wrote there. i'm like yeah i didn't write <laughs> that dennis wrote it but that's a, <laughs> yeah. kindred spirits in Absolutely. the lyrics world yeah well there's no doubt your music has grown a lot since you guys first started but the music industry has changed a lot as well so thinking about i know you guys are working on a new album now have you felt a need to cater to any current music trends at all we literally <laughs> never no. ever cater to any of that crap mm. yeah. we will write music that we enjoy writing and we will be alisana forever it's the same yeah. we put out an ep for the sheer fact that no one does that anymore and it used yeah. to be such a big thing like when i was going to shows you get the eps and like a lot of these things that are just dying out because we have people get mad at us that we put out an EP I'm like we put out new music what are you exactly. upset about well it's not a full length it's like I don't think uh, you get anything about what yeah. art actually is yeah <laughs> in the very, meaning behind very it very entitled these guys <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's not necessarily their fault but it's a sad symptom of uh, but it's up to what's them happening. to fix it mm -hmm. Never. there you go and I mean are there any current bands that you're influenced by at all or do you just kind of do your own thing no, we're always influenced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, well, influence from everything from 
whatever's current to Elton John. Like, you know, the way we talk about it, it's, it's about being inspired by music and art, not because, hey, that band sounds cool, I want to sound like that band. It's right. being inspired by music and art in general is what uh-huh. fires me up anyway. Totally. And um, what is the number one most impactful life lesson you've learned through your experience in this band? We're getting deep here. Most impactful life lesson you've learned through the band, through being um, in this band. I think traveling is one of the best things that anyone could ever do for themselves. If it's just a semester abroad or going to another place and realizing that a human experience is a human thing and seeing it only through one lens of where you're from is just really limiting yourself. And it's good to be able to walk another by someone else's shoes, even like for us, it's usually a day to see like what their world is like. And we've had the chance, we were talking about what, five continents, like five all continents, over. Five continents, all 48 uh, states that are mm-hmm. here, not Alaska or Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like states. I just understand people a lot more than I did before I was in the band. That mm-hmm. would be my lesson. Yeah, what about you? Anything else you wanna add to that or? You nailed it. Sorry, you nailed it over here. <laughs> and now you, you do have a new album that you've said is coming out spring 2015. Yes. Yes. That's confirmed. Um, and this is going to be the conclusion of the Annabelle trilogy that started with the emptiness. Uh, no big deal or anything uh, here. <laughs> Are you feeling any pressure knowing that this is the conclusion of something you started in 2010? It's not necessarily pressure. It's excitement. Yeah, no, I mean, I, there's a little bit of pressure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I think it's because, like, we do the emptiness, like, hey, let's tell our own story. Yeah. And that was hugely popular within our fan base, and it's like, that's great. But now, every time after this, we got to live up to that, you know, and, and especially with really feel, hyping feel, yeah. the trilogy thing, yeah. our most core fans are really expecting something, so it puts yeah. a little bit of pressure. Yeah. I think we're up to the challenge. That's why, exactly, yeah. not, not too nervous about that's why it. I say I'm not nervous. <laughs> yes, it's a challenge. We've still, sure, we still but, got a couple of. Aces up our sleeves, Absolutely. kids. You haven't seen it all. Right. And I'll tell you this, if it doesn't give us goosebumps, we won't write it. So, okay. that's that, our big that's thing. That's reassuring, for sure. What new elements are you adding? You're saying you have some stuff up your sleeve, so what are you gonna add to this album to make it better? It's gonna be in my sleeve for it to be up my sleeve, so I can't put it on, <gasps> no. on the interview right now. I but say it's we, all right, if you want to. <laughs> I'm sure you do. You and but you'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> no, oh, the suspense now. But how is the writing and recording process going so far? Are you guys almost done? How's the process? We, we have our process and we stick to it. And I don't ever like saying, are we almost done? Are we ever this? Because like, it's not done till it's done. So, right. so but and, and until then, it's a work in progress. And that's all we can it's say. It's nice now with Revival Records and Adelaide Recording Studios. In Raleigh, North Carolina, that because um, normally you know we had to fly across the country and get right together and write stuff. Now we got it in house. Like we, yeah. we cut out all the middle. Our own label, our own recording studio. We are the only ones who make the calls now, and it's right. it's allowed for a lot of creative freedom, which we've craved Absolutely. for many years. Yeah. So. And now, once this trilogy is over, what in the world are you guys going to write about next? Like, are you going to do more autobiographical stuff, or are you going to start a new story? Like, what are you I'm thinking? Question for lizards. Just lizard okay. people and stuff. Now, um, One thing we've, we've, we've sort of fantasized about over the years is, again, we're big fans of EPs. We thought this idea of like serial EP releasing, where it's like almost like when um, like Stephen King did the Green Mile and it came out piece by piece by piece by piece. It's kind of doing something like that. There's a lot of crazy things we want to accomplish, but right now we're focused on ending the trilogy before we can even look beyond <laughs> it. I mean, the lizard idea is not bad, and we have a lot of lizards in Florida, so you can find a lot of inspiration. I've seen a couple. <laughs> on the walls there. Exactly. So you're ready for the next release already. What do you know? The release after the next release. Yeah, this is stunning for the lizard EP. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Um, but what are your plans for right after this tour? You guys are on a headlining tour right now. What's coming up after this for you guys? We're recording a brand new single for December. Okay. It'll come out this December. All right, looking forward to that. And that's a part of the trilogy too. Okay. Like how Fatima Rusalka came out last year, it was like a character exploration. We're doing another one for another character. Oh, so, so. you're introducing new characters then? It's not necessarily about yeah. introducing new characters, it's about expanding on characters that already exist and kind of where their state of mind came from. Yeah, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, you know, about the Cimmerillion and that kind of concept. Yeah. Just, you know, beefing up. The backstory is a little bit for there everybody. Backstory is everything to good storytelling. That's what makes you fall in love with characters. Mm-hmm. So. And anybody who wants to follow you guys, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff, where can they go? Alice Santa. At Alice Santa. I'm pretty sure it's all just Alice Santa. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm at <laughs> I'm at Denny Diablo. We, we got at I'm, Sean the Milky. Sean the Milky. Because <laughs> everybody stole my real name, so I had to go with this weird like made up thing. But. Hang on a second. Verified lifestyle. <laughs> Verified. Verified. All right. Just look for the check. Look for the blue Just check. Look for the blue check. <laughs> Well, you made it simple enough. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. It has been awesome. And everybody watching, if you haven't gotten the Deck ADP, you need to get that on iTunes. Stat, subscribe for more interviews, and I'll see you next time. Bye.